Guys, this is Luke from the Scoundrels Cantina, and welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be going over all known clone trooper law enforcement units seen throughout the Clone Wars. As always, we're mixing the expanded universe and canon because we believe that there is no reason why most of it can't fit together. Anyway, let's begin. At number one, we of course have the Coruscant Guard, which was an elite division of clone shock troopers organized as a military police force to protect the capital planet of the Republic, Coruscant. At the very beginning of the Clone Wars, Kalos and Nama were used to designate Clone Trooper ranks rather than unit affiliation, which was not the case for the Coruscant Guard, which was immediately recognized by the Crimson Armor markings and the Republic Senate seal. When the Phase 1 armor was replaced by the Phase 2 armor, the Crimson markings were much more heavily featured, and all Clone Shock Troopers had the exact same design, unlike with their previous armor. These Clone Shock Troopers were some of the most loyal troopers in the entire Grand Army of the Republic, specifically to the Supreme Chancellor. The Coruscant Guard had four Clone Commanders in total, which were Commander Fox, Commander Thyre, Commander Stone, and Commander Thorn. Each of the Clone Commanders were in command of their own part of the Coruscant Guard and had certain duties. Commander Fox was of the highest rank in the Coruscant Guard and was stationed in the capital of Coruscant, while the other three mostly served in the Coruscant Guard's branch called the Diplomatic Service, which specialized in escorting diplomats to planets across the galaxy. The clones in the Guard were able to rise through the ranks, such as Commander Thyre did, as at the beginning of the war he was only a lieutenant. The Diplomatic Service branch was trained to fight in urban areas, as the diplomatic escort missions were known to get a little messy from time to time, as seen when Commander Stone's mission to form got compromised by pirates, as well as when Thyre ended up stranded on Rugosa alongside Jedi Master Yoda. Even the badass Commander Thorn had a situation like this on Scipio when the Separatists launched a surprise attack, which cost him and his men their lives, as they were greatly outnumbered. On Coruscant, the Guard was found protecting vital government buildings such as the Senate Building alongside the Senate Guards, as well as important Republic officials and Senators. They also served as peacekeepers and assisted the Coruscant Security Force, as well as often they patrolled the streets in the Coruscant Police Gunships. The Coruscant Guard also used specially crimson painted LAAT Republic gunships in order to signify their affiliation. They were also stationed at the Republic Judiciary Central Detention Center as prison guards, where their blasters and other armaments were always set for stun. Turn your weapons off stun. Kill the prisoners if you have to. The Coruscant Guard had a branch of Cone Riot Troopers who were specially trained in riot control. They were usually seen patrolling the streets and assisting the police force in controlling crowds at demonstrations. They were armed with riot shields and stun batons, and the Phase 1 armor was slightly different compared to the regular Phase 1 shock troopers. Advanced Recon Force troopers were also seen in the Coruscant Guard and were led by Sergeant Hound and his massive pet, Greaser. These Coruscant Guard off troopers were especially called off trooper armor and used reptilian like creatures called massives as bloodhounds when tracking fugitives. At the ending of the Clone Wars and the reorganization of the Republic into the Galactic Empire, the Coruscant Guard continued to serve in the New Order and shared responsibility of Coruscant security with the Emperor's Royal Guards. During the Empire's reign, they would eventually adopt Imperial Shock Trooper armor, aka Phase 3 armor, also known as Stormtrooper armor. Nonetheless, we liked them the most during the Clone Wars. We'll have something for him. At number two is the Kamino Security Force, which served as law enforcement on the home planet of the Clone Army, Kamino. When the Separatists invaded Kamino, the 501st Legion, along with the Rancor Battalion, defended Topoka City from the Droid Army, up until which point the Kamino Security Force wasn't yet formed. After the successful defense of Topoka City, the Kamino Security Force was formed, and most likely soon enough would transition from plain white Phase 1 armor to Phase 2 Clone Trooper armor. They will be recognized by their grey markings which are identical to those of the Phase 2 Coruscant Guard's Clone Shock Troopers. Their commanding officer was an unidentified Clone Officer who was equipped as a Phase 2 Clone Commander with a visor over his helmet and a karma. Their Jedi General in command was Shakti since she spent much of the Clone Wars on Kamino overseeing the training of the Clone Cadets. The Clone Troopers of the Kamino Security Force were almost blindly loyal to the Kamen Owens, similarly as the Coruscant Guard was to the Chancellor. Around 19 BBY during the Battle of Ringo Vinda, Clone Trooper Top of the 501st Legion turned on Jedi General Tipla and murdered her. Top would be taken to Topoka City by Arc Trooper 5s to be examined by the Kamen Owens and find out why he killed the Jedi General. 
After suspecting that the Kaminoans weren't taking good care of his friend, Fives created a diversion and examined his friend himself, thus discovering an inhibitor chip implanted in him, after which Tup died. The Kaminoans knew exactly what the chips were for, so in order to cover up the near discovery of Order 66, they sent Fives to have his brain wiped. While being escorted by the blindly loyal Kamin of security, his droid friend AZ-3 told him what was going to happen to him, so he lashed out at the guards and managed to escape from them. The Kamin of security force searched for him throughout the Poker City, and eventually, with the help of Shakti, found him along with the droid and the Kamino and Nala Se, who was trying to cover up the conspiracy. The troopers of the Kamino guard suspected nothing regarding the contingency order that was implanted in both them and their brothers. When Order 66 was issued, the Kamino security most likely turned on the Jedi who were on Kamino at the time, and that is about everything that is known about them. And finally, at number 3, we have the 5th Fleet Security Cone Troopers, who are in charge of keeping security on board Republic vessels such as Vendor-class Star Destroyers, Consular-class cruisers, Acclimator-class assault ships, and many others. During the first half of the Cone Wars, they most likely wore plain white Phase 1 Cone armor. The 5th Fleet Troopers were recognized by the blue markings to cover their armor, and mostly utilized DC-15S blaster carbines. That's about everything that is known about them. Anyway guys, this is it on the video, and we hope you all enjoyed it, and learned something new about the vast galaxy of Star Wars. If you enjoy our content, make sure to check out our second war channel The Crossroads Inn, and if you want to watch more videos like this one, the links to the playlist for our other Star Wars stories and videos will be in the description down below. Also, if you want to support this channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one, and remember guys, God is awesome, may the force be with you always, and we'll see you in another video. You rebel scum. This party's over.